Hey, so on this video, I want to see if I can get a uh, editor for Rust. Um, so let's start with what we know. Um, what do we know, actually? The the Rust website, right? Learning. Open that. Make this a little bit bigger. So go to the Rust website. I know that if I go to getting started or get started I have this is installing rust scroll down build your project run your project test your project publish your project don't know much about that but there are other tools rust, su rust support is available in many editors VS Code, Eclipse, Sublime Text 3 Vim, Atom, Emacs, IntelliJ okay so I'm not much of an IDE person, but IntelliJ is is what I know somewhat. So for the IntelliJ Rust uh, support, it is in the form of a plugin, which means that you have to install a different version of IntelliJ. This is compatible with um, the IDEs, PHP Storm, WebStorm, PyCharm. Ruby mine, app code, C line, Golang, you, you get the you get the idea. You have to go to a different ID, uh, preferably not plugins. So let's let's go to the JetBrains website. And let's not go to plugins. Let's just go to their website. Cool. And in here, you can see that they have all these IDEs, but not all of these are free. For example, for the Goland 30 day trial. I'm not gonna try to program in Rust with a 30 day trial of something else. However, I know that a couple uh, of their editors has a community version. I think that is IntelliJ IDE. Let me double check. No, wait, no, download, take the tour. I'm not seeing it. Well, definitely PyCharm does. Ah, it's probably in, under the buy section. New download section. Download, so we have professional community. Community is free and open source. Professional, same deal. I think it's 30 day free trial. So let's go down to IntelliJ just to confirm real quick. Download, they have the community version. JVM and Android. If I ever want to do Android development, I'll probably download this. Free! I like free. All right, let's go back to PyCharm. I know Python. Don't know Java, not really. So I'll start here. Download the community version. Open community version. A few more seconds. All right, it is completed. Download is completed. So we have here, wants us to extract it, extract. I always put things in downloads. Not exactly sure why, but let's do. Extract it there. Show me the files. Here. Uh, there's a bin. So what's weird about this setup, at least for the first time is, well, maybe not for the first time, I'm not sure, I don't really install this. But the startup file, I believe, is this one. However, you have to run that file and not click on that file because if you click on it, hey, text document. I didn't want to read it as text. So this is going to open my terminal and see what I can do. Ooh, move that to the side, make this a little bit bigger. And I always put everything in downloads. And this is high. Not capitalized PyCharm. And here they have the bin. And as you can see right here, they have the SH file, the one I just clicked on. So if I did something like bash PyCharm.sh, Now exactly what that's about. Failed to load something, but that's a GCK thing. I do not have anything I want to import. Do not import my settings. 
Do I care about your privacy agreement? Sure. I um, send dark theme. Create a script for opening files and projects from the command line. That sounds useful. Looks like it's going to be called Charm. Okay. Featured plugins. Don't know how to use it, but I would like fast support. Markdown sounds nice. Don't know Vim. I do not know Vim. Our language? Nah. Uh, start using. And now I need to put in the secrets. So this part was always a little confusing. I, I went through this process last night once, but I was kind of tired. Where is PyCharm? So let's minimize this. Let's minimize this. And we notice, oh, it does exist. It's just hiding behind all of the windows. Oh. Um, so in order to use PyCharm for a Rush project, we should probably have a Rush project already created. So let, let's let's go to, to ah, I got an idea. Let's go to GitHub and download a Rush project. GitHub.com. Search for awesome Rust. Unofficial. Okay. And I don't really care about what I do, so let's take one that seems pretty standard. Security tools. You have a passing build. What are you? And have no idea what you are, but I will clone you. Copy. Go back to my terminal. Ooh, uh, so if I open a new new one. Documents. What if I... Oh, I don't have a GitHub. Psh, I really don't program on this computer much. Create GitHub, GitHub directory. GitHub, git clone. So now I have cloned that. I should be able to open it. I'm guessing that's not that's not PyCharm. PyCharm currently doesn't. Oh, there we go. Here it is. Here's the PyCharm icon. I was looking for that. Let's open a project. Uh, Marcus, it's me. Documents. GitHub. This guy. Open. Gives you tips of the day. Um, close that because that's not what I care about right now. Uh, full disclosure, I've never looked at this project. I have no idea what it does. But I know it has stuff in it. Still indexing. Oh, and then we hit this line right here. Plugin supporting star RS files found. So they found plugins. Let's install these plugins. They found two. Okay, let's install both. Uh, using third party plugins may involve a plugin vendor processing your personal data. Please check the plugin vendor's documentation for details concerning personal data processing. JetBrains is not responsible for any processing of your personal data by any third-party plugin vendors. Noted. And down here it says I can restart. Icon is back. It says I can only use one of these at a time. So I'm going to go with Rust. Enable and start. Come on, come on. There we go. I'm going to close the tip of the day. Now we notice we have the documentation is highlighted. 
that string is highlighted. Let's go to a library that has stuff in it. Uh, this doesn't really have all that much in it. This is actually really, really small. Oh, this has some stuff in it. Oh, the file is still being indexed, or the project. Let's see what happens after I finish indexing. Not that damn thing. Wait, no, wait, wait. We have some other stuff, new stuff that just appeared. So you have to wait until it's done indexing, and then you get extra stuff. Like, here, let me let me try to make this bigger. So if, a pro tip, well, I'm not sure if it's a pro tip. I had to figure it out yesterday. But if you want to make things bigger, for like your text, you have to go to settings. Uh, there was a general editor general look font and this font size is way too small it's hard for me to see let's make it 22 apply okay all right e. make that a little bit bigger so now that we can see it clearly we can see that we got some extra stuff we got the syntax highlighting which we had from the very beginning but we get let it shows us this type I think I think that's a type struct repository repository clone so this thing must return the repository this is just an object returns an output I think yeah we can probably look at this and see what it returns so I think you do control and click into it. And I have no idea what that means. Hold on. Stable feature, process, since, I guess that's the version that was introduced and is public. That's why we can call it. This is a function. New, that's the name of the function. S, program S. Guessing this is a trait. And it throws back a command. And then it initializes. So what's being returned is a command. All right, if a turn command is being, I have no idea why this is called output. Repo, repository. Let's, let's look at another one. Match takes in text. Then what are you? I would assume they are output. Regex takes in a new regex. That's here. Run make. This is a rule. Current working directory. I can see, yeah. So I'm not sure what everything is here, but as you can see, we got we got some extra things. We got whatever these are, depending on when the parameters are being passed in, it looks like they just satisfy what this is supposed to be. Um I'm not exactly sure what this is. Could be the output of this, but not explicitly clear. And I'm pretty sure that if we wanted to import something, we can get extra information. So let's say use STD, do what they did there. And now we have a list of things that we can import. If I did collections, then I have a list of the collections. Never really looked at this linked list, hash, B trees, binary heap. Cool. And then you can auto complete that. What else can you do in here? Um, I already demonstrated clicking into things. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to click back into it. Like you can go, like if you control click on clone, right? It brings you to clone. But there's a way of going backwards that I'm not exactly sure how to do. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. You can look that up in the PyCharm or IntelliJ or the just JetBrains documentation. There's plenty of features in this thing. And they also mentioned something about Bash, at least when we installed that terminal. Hey, looks like we can open a terminal and we're already in this directory. Okay, and I guess from here you could just run terminal command. So let's cat something and see if it works. Build RS, and yes, we did. 
So we have the terminal, so we can do things in here. Um, so it's just a terminal. For example, one of the, my favorite commands is the SL command. I'll show you what it looks like right now. I have my little train go by. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching the video, for watching me struggle through using PyCharm and the REST plugin. Hope it's helpful. Peace.